Now let's start to put the ECG to use and see what information we can extract in disease situations. The first topic we will deal with, deviation of the cardiac axis, is perhaps the most abstract and concerns disease processes which alter the pattern of spread of depolarization around the ventricles. Cardiac depolarization travels through the ventricles in a highly organized temporal and spatial pattern. Many common diseases alter the pattern of flow of depolarization around the chambers. Such alterations result in predictable changes in the morphology of the QRS complexes. And a relatively simple way of characterizing this is to estimate the position of the cardiac axis. So what is the cardiac axis? You will remember from section 1 that the six frontal leads examine the heart in the vertical or frontal plane. If we take a coronal section through the chest cavity and focus on depolarization events in the main muscle mass of the right and left ventricles, you will see that in the frontal plane, depolarizing forces of differing magnitudes, seen here in blue, are moving through the chambers in many different directions during the normal process of ventricular depolarization. If we add together all of the depolarization vectors occurring in the frontal plane throughout the duration of ventricular depolarization, we can generate an overall vector, which of course has a magnitude and direction. The direction of this total frontal QRS vector defined by the angle it makes with lead 1 is the cardiac axis. In normal circumstances, the direction of the frontal QRS vector is dominated by the depolarization vectors generated in the large left ventricular muscle mass. The pattern of depolarization of the left ventricle is in turn dictated by the precise anatomy of the intraventricular conducting system. To understand the cardiac axis and axis deviation, you need to be familiar with the anatomy of the intraventricular conducting system. We simplified our description of ventricular conduction in section 1 to aid comprehension. We considered the left bundle branch of the conducting system as a single anatomical entity. The analysis remains valid, but to understand the cardiac axis and axis deviation in disease, we need a little more anatomical detail. In the diagram shown here, we are looking at the heart sitting on the diaphragm from the left. If we take a section as indicated through the organ and remove the anterior surface, we can examine the conducting system in the ventricles in more detail. We are particularly interested in the left bundle branch. Shortly after the anatomical bifurcation of the bundle of Hiss into right and left bundle branches, the left bundle branch itself quickly divides into three distinct collections of conducting fibers. A septal branch which travels downwards into the septum, an anterior fascicle and a posterior fascicle. The left anterior fascicle depolarizes the anterior and lateral walls of the left ventricle as shown here, while the left posterior fascicle simultaneously depolarizes the posterior and inferior surfaces of the chamber. In a normal heart, these two depolarizing vectors are the prime determinant of the cardiac axis. As shown here, in the frontal plane, the plane of the screen, they can be represented as vectors flowing simultaneously from the left anterior fascicle and from the left posterior fascicle. As you can see when we use the parallelogram rule to add them together, the total vector generated is traveling downwards and to the left, more or less straight down lead 2, at approximately 60 degrees relative to lead 1. With the cardiac axis close to plus 60 degrees, this is well within 90 degrees of the three standard leads, 
And in this normal situation, the QRS complexes in these three leads are strongly positive, with dominant OR waves. Get into the habit of recognizing this normal pattern down the right-hand side of the ECG. Also note that as AVL lies at 90 degrees relative to lead 2, as shown here, AVL tends to be close to isoelectric in this situation. The pattern of QRS complexes in the frontal leads on this ECG indicates that the cardiac axis lies at approximately 60 degrees and is consistent with an intact intraventricular conducting system. There are extensive anastomoses between the anterior and posterior systems at their termination in the wall of the left ventricle. If one of these major branches is damaged and flow through it blocked, in the example shown here the left anterior fascicle, the ventricle can be depolarized by retrograde flow of depolarization from the intact branch via these anastomoses. However, even in this simple 2D graphic, it is clear that this will have a dramatic effect on the direction of the frontal QRS vector. If disease blocks conduction in the anterior fascicle and the lateral and anterior ventricular walls are depolarized by current flowing upwards from the anastomoses in the left ventricular wall, the cardiac axis is now traveling upwards and to the left this is termed left axis deviation. While with blocked conduction in the posterior fascicle, the inferior surface is depolarized by current flowing from above, and the sum of these two major vectors is now moving downwards and towards the right. This is termed right axis deviation. Many common diseases damage the distal components of the left ventricular conducting system, resulting in left or right axis deviation on the ECG. We will now go on to show you how to identify significant axis deviation, and we will then go on to discuss their causes.